good. Then you know, you oh. know the drill. Just be a minute or so mm -hmm. while I'm looking for something to talk about. Okay. Got you good as new. No, oh, so already lagging behind their team. Usually, just yeah. a good idea to just make sure we're like always. You know, it's just it's a pretty um bad habit to be into it just not be prepared while walking out of spawn usually a good idea to just mm -hmm. be like with your team as you're going because then something like this happens where like they're like really really far ahead of you and then that can potentially throw the first fight which but then in turn means that they have more ults and they have more you know then they have more confidence and you guys you get a more uh uh met a morale blow i was thinking morality mm -hmm. i was like that's not the word i'm looking for um <laughs> You get a morale blow, and then now that could potentially snowball into the rest of the game. So usually it's a good idea to just make sure you come out on spawn, out of spawn on time, so that we're with our team. Okay, now I we... have a very bad habit of coming out late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it looks like we kind of rolled them there. When I saw Ryan, our critical would probably be a good time to just use the use the shift to burst them back up right um Okay, rather than running all the way around, because this puts us in some pretty poor positioning, mm -hmm. we have the option to just mm -hmm. jump up in the air, right? We just oh, right. charge up a crouch, jump up straight up. This can get us on top of the wall, get us over it, be able to shoot at them. Um, also, and then that does, means that we're not out in the open where we could get very easily killed. Also, this lamp probably isn't necessary with like the health bars of everyone. Um, mm -hmm. besides McCree, who's nowhere near the lamp where we're throwing it, and we also end up throwing lamp into a object, yeah. right? So just a bunch of tiny little things, like, or I guess not a bunch of tiny things, a lot, a lot of things are just all at once. Um, so just want to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. And then now we're out of lamp, if we might need it here in a moment. Reload in between fights, right? Take the, use this opportunity to when we're you know when we've won this fight to reposition to the best place possible. Where where probably would be the the best place to be positioning at the moment if we had all the time in the world to reposition. High ground, yep, behind. And on anyone the ledge. in particular? This one. Um, I would say a little further up. This one. This one. Yep. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that's probably the one yeah. I would pick too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pro, you know, just give you a lot of different angles, good survivability. Right. We've talked about positioning extensively is just mm -hmm. where we the timing in which we want to be doing that right mm -hmm. okay so we do take icon and our team kind of rolled them so uh not too mm -hmm. much to talk about on first point couple tiny or tiny mistakes um we stopped over mercy or we want to go over mercy here oh yeah yeah they i'm okay doing that just because i do have some questions when when um when there's an echo, I feel mm -hmm. obligated to go mercy, but I have a hard time understanding when I should switch from just pocketing echo and going to help Winston. So mm -hmm. maybe we could talk about that a little yeah. bit. So just real, real quick, right off the bat, like I can just give you some, like it's always going to be situational, right? But just off the bat, you have some general rules, but essentially... Mm -hmm. A, a pocket target, right? That's a term you're probably familiar with. Like, Echo mm -hmm. is your pocket target. She's the best thing for you to be on in this composition. Um, but a, a, a word that I honestly like to use better um, when I'm doing coaching with people because it's a lot easier of a term to understand their the function of a pocket target is a default target. So rather mm -hmm. than it being... I, I like mm -hmm. to just, like, you know, to, to, for you to think of them like that so they're your default target. That means that anytime everyone's full HP, anytime nobody needs you, you're on your pocket target because they're going to be the best thing, or your default target, right? Because it's the best thing to default back to. But anytime someone is low, someone's in danger, anytime you need to go for a res, they, or there's a just a better person to be on, then you're swapping over to something else. So, for example, like there sometimes there could be just a better target to be on, like if Echoes for some reasons all the way over here in Narnia, right? And the fight's mm -hmm. happening over here, you might want to be on somebody else. Or if Echo's dead, you might be want to want to be on somebody else, right? If you need to go for res, be on somebody else. Mm -hmm. If Monkey's critical and low, then you be a Monkey. If Monkey's just down 50 HP, 
probably don't want to be with Monkey. And unless the fight's, if the fight's done, then again, you, the, if the fight's done, then you can just heal everyone back up to full. But that's just the general rule of, of Mercy Pockets, is it's they act as default targets when there's nothing else to do, you're back with them. All right, All right. so let's, okay. let's, let's see how that kind of acts itself out here. Okay. And I normally don't play uh, Mercy mm. in these compositions because this is a brand new uh, support lineup where Emmy is a, I think he's a better Ana than myself. So when he mm -hmm. takes Ana, I have to play the main support, which I'm not used to doing. All right. We'll see. Yeah. First thing I'm noticing is that we're staring at our the thing mm -hmm. that we're healing. All right. I don't. We, we've gone over Mercy before, though, right? We, uh, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. We, some of these things, you know, might be repeat things, but um, you know. Here, we don't want to be staring at the thing we're healing because we could be healing her and looking this direction in the complete opposite direction and still be healing her in indefinitely, right? We can right. see how low she is based off of the health bar we have right underneath her crosshair. And we can glance over at her for sure if we, if we like, need to, right? But besides that, there's no reason for us to be staring at her because then that means that we are missing out on a ton of visibility, for example, of, like, where is the enemy team at, right? Where is the rest of my team at, right? This means that we're lacking a lot of awareness of our surroundings when we're only staring at one thing in particular, right? So we just want to make sure we're looking yeah. around us. Yeah. I think I was staring at her a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, like that's a fine situation to swap over the monkey mm -hmm. that we do and the losing them here. Okay, so mm -hmm. movement-wise, it's looking like we're we're a little bit uh wonky with it so far, I guess. Like we don't mm -hmm. maybe have the most experience with Mercy. Here we just fall off the high grounds, which maybe isn't the best uh you know, make, make sure we're just being aware. We just kinda walk backwards off the high ground, make sure we're being aware of our surroundings so that we're not giving up good positioning for no reason. Right? And if we think we're getting close if we know we're getting close to an edge, add in a crouch so that we're not just walking off and it gives us more control over our movement because you move slower. Mm -hmm. Um here we just fall off and then we come back up and then we yeah. try to go on the monkey and then monkey goes around the corner and we just back off really far there when we don't need to and that puts mm -hmm. monkey out of our line of sight when he's 1 HP and then again monkey goes out of our line of sight again and we fall off of high ground again right so it's just all over the place right now just want to make sure yeah. we're sticking up on the high ground and being in line of sight of our monkey okay, and then right now we want to be back up on the high ground yep just want to keep this high ground positioning most likely here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get overly worried that they're going to go for me and I don't mm. know. So who, who in particular is going to go for you, right? Like taking a look at team uh, compositions, right? They have Zarya who can't reach you, right? I just mm -hmm. have enough range. Reinhardt can't get to you. Um, Lucio, who, you know, you can see him coming from pretty far away. Baptiste, who can l maybe poke you out. McCree, who can get to you, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. right? And Reaper, who can teleport to you. But, you know, if we're just aware of Reaper, and we're aware of Lucio, and we're not standing on the open from, from McCree and Baptiste, then we should be fine, right? And keep right, in mind right, as well right. that, that we've talked about this previously, but all of High Ground Next is natural, as natural cover, and you also have this little box thing here. Sure, so McCree, sure. McCree starts shooting at us, we go like this, boom. Okay, us, right? So mm -hmm. we just want to make sure that we're... High ground is still probably going to be the best option for us to be on, uh, for us to be at, right? Especially like if all of that, like the entire first like minute was just us hanging around there on the high ground, right? Or like in that general area, which meant that we were just missing out on a bunch of time and and, and resources just because we kept falling and being in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so we're flying away from the Reaper. No issues here. Let's get you back out there. You should be at peak performance level. Here, I think I'm just staring at her again for a long time, maybe. Yeah, I mean, in between this fight, this is not too much to right. to be concerned about with that. All right, so we're using Echo, Primal, and Valk. On not too much of an issue with that. Pretty good Valk timing. Want to just make sure we're on the damage boost. Yep, we are. Um, 
Though it's looking like, yeah, the, these guys are maybe outside of the fight a little bit. Um, so mm. the thing with, I guess, just our, our that'd be, I'd say, more of our team engagement. I think it's fine because our, because it was honestly our, our, our Echo and our Monkey win first. But team engagement wise, probably don't want to be engaging them until like they come in a little bit further because right now we're not getting Torbs can't do anything, Zarya can't do very much, right? Because the look of right. far she is here, you know, Torb Turret's not doing anything. Ana doesn't have the best positioning on really anything, so it would have been much, much better for us if we just, like, let them walk in and then engage. Trey, they kind of came in from a bunch of different angles, so the t that timing's not the best. I'm taking care of you. First of all, you should be at peak performance levels. Let me get you patched up. Alright, so, um, default targets, right, just whenever we're not needed, so these guys are pretty much full HP here, um, mm -hmm. these guys over here are full HP, right, monkeys full, like, if we look at top right, everyone's full HP, so this is where we're mm -hmm. defaulting back to the pocket target, which, which is Echo, which means we just want to be looking around and trying to find her, um, and then we're just not on Echo, and then Echo dies, right, here in a moment, yeah. so that's just us not being with the right targets. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we know. Oh, um, going for a res really <laughs> far on the open. Now, do we get it? Right in the open. Now, we get it, get away with that. Um, one thing I would say is just, I mean, there's no reason for us to be staring at them. So, um, here, wherever we're trying to go for a res, mm -hmm. we pro what we want to be doing is probably turning around and looking, like, at the ground. So, what this does is it, it manipulates our head hitbox so that mm -hmm. they cannot see our head nearly as easily, right? If we're staring straight at them, then our head's, like, you know, staring straight at them, right? But if we're looking at the ground, then this becomes a lot more difficult of a headshot to, to hit because our head's going to be aiming at the ground and therefore they're just hitting, shooting our shoulders, which means that they can't hit headshots, right? So whenever we're trying to go for a res, it's like kind of, and we know there's people shooting at us, turn around and look at the floor or do you do also just spin in a, spin in a circle and uh, you can like up your sensitivity like with a DPI button or whatever, right? You can just spin around um, that way it's hard for the people to hit your heads. That's why you see more. It's not necessarily just for, a, like, a meme why you see Mercies do that. It's because it's a, it's a strategy to stop people from headshotting you while you're rezzing. Mm -hmm. Right, and then because we're only open, that does get us killed. So just keep in mind yeah. that you don't necessarily want to suicide to get a res off because that means that you're okay. just going one for one, whereas, you know, what we could have gotten a lot more value out of staying alive and then potentially even going for a another res on a different person in a safer position which means that now you're alive and that person's alive so you know us staying right. just want to make wanting to make sure that we're, when we're going for reses that it's a safe res to go for so eyeball them up see is it do i have cover do i have positioning do you know do i have my team with me can i go for it and then if you can't then you might not want to go for it all right so here we all swap off we swap on a different comp here Yeah. Now I was noticing this a little bit. Uh, I overhealing still mm -hmm. a thing, right? More yeah. overhealing. We saw a little bit on the first round. Also, I saw a little bit on Mercy as well. Just you know, oh, I think this has been a, a thing that's kind of been repeat since the beginning. Now, of course, I yep. think it's been definitely it's definitely better than the first time that we ever had it. But it's still a thing. So awareness of just paying attention health bars, making sure we're not just ho holding down our right click when people are full. Is just something we want to concentrate and put focus into, so we're not continuously mm -hmm. making the same mistake over and over again. All right. Um. So immortality usage, Reaper. There, honestly, I don't think that you could have even really saved Reaper if we tried. He kind of was just out of position for, by himself, mm -hmm. but nobody else here within this range really even needs it, right? At the moment that mm -hmm. we throw it, so just. Uh, maybe were we? Yeah, I don't think we were trying to get Reaper with it. Just mm, you so. know what? A lot of times I fat finger this Im the ammo because I have it bound to E and reload is R. Hmm. But uh, it's they're right next to each other. It it gets me way too much, but I'm afraid to rebind keys at this point, so I just have to uh -huh. pay a bit. Just yeah, really focus you, on it. 
you can pay attention to it. Rebounding mm -hmm. keys like is an option. Um, but then the other thing is, I'm I don't know if this is a fat finger because we do look down at the floor. Uh, um, when we go for it, like you kind of notice right, that right. like how we're aiming it, and we also do put it like on a corner. Um, yeah. so that maybe indicates that it was maybe some more intentional, um, placement yeah. of it. But in any case, just nobody at the moment really needs it besides the Reaper who got blown up in half of a second there. So we just right. want to make sure we're not wasting it because so far we've seen, I'd probably say, would say that ability usage is looking like one of the bigger things at the moment mm -hmm. to be working at. Well, it does fall in line with the overhealing thing, so that would totally make sense. Yep. Which is yeah. falling in line with the same awareness of mm -hmm. w how much health does my team have? How in danger are, are they, right? We have a ton of different things that go into, into that, right? Like, just a second later, mm -hmm. just a couple seconds later after we use that, immediately they, they actually need it, right? So, yeah, they, we used it, and then it's gone, and then now, like, let's just, like, look a couple seconds later. And now we have, we have Lucy, who's, who's one, Zarya, who's below half, right? Um... You know, this would be a perfect situation mm -hmm. to be using this immortality for these guys. Like, we could just, like, plop it down in this right side corner here or whatever in this left side. Mm -hmm. right? Something like that, right? Just plop it down for the Zarya and the Lucio. And then now, boom, we've gotten value. But we just used it a couple seconds too early. And then now we've lost a ton of value. So just paying attention to the surroundings, paying attention to health bars, and how in, how in danger are people, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit on the open here. Mm -hmm. um, also, when they were up on the high ground there, we kind of like... So, they're, they're up here, right? And imagine how easy it would be for them to just like drop here and like kind of look at this yeah. vision. We're like, we, we turn our back to them. We don't know where they're going. We just know they're up on right. the high ground, right? We turn our back and walk into the room where they're, where they're all at, right? So, we, we know they're up there and we... If like they had just decided to drop, like there's two places that they're going here. They're either going top or they're going bottom. If they decided to go to the bottom, then we are just gonna get rolled over and be kind of like assume they're going top without maybe even checking or like paying attention. Then here they they go top and they leap out into the open, um, out of position, right? And then that mm -hmm. puts us lower, potentially kind of get gotten us killed there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we do throw out the immortality. Honestly, I think that's pretty decent because there's a we do have two people who were critical there. Right, so that one was pretty good. Now, ammo doesn't heal, right? It just kind of preserves... It just helps them at the stage they're at in terms yeah. of health. Yeah, so it's okay. not going to heal them. Um, it's just going to stop them from going too low. Now, um, uh actually what happened i'm actually not aware of what happens when uh -huh. somebody is one like let's say someone's like literally one hp because i believe it's like 20 it, it preserves them at 25 hp right they are not able to go down below 25 oh. hp now if they're one hp and they get immortality i'm actually not aware of what happens i, I think they just stay at one until they got healed mm. and then if they were already previously blow but I'm I'm unaware of what of that because I guess I never thought about it. But mm -hmm. yeah, in any case, it doesn't heal. It just keeps them from going below 25 HP if they're within it. Okay. All right, now let's rewatch that for half a second. So we use immortality. All right, we got hit by the fire strike. They're about to push in. We see our tanks backing out, but we stay a little bit too far, far to the right there. Right, the, the Zara here. Um, just making sure that we're paying attention to our surroundings once again, right? If our team's pushing out here, we want to stick with our team and not get get too isolated from them. And then Zarya goes on the flank here, right? We could possibly be closer to the health pack to get the usage out of the health pack, request healing faster to maybe get the Lucio to come amp you up or something like th of th that, um, you know, along those lines. Or we just probably want to be closer to our team, right? So that they can help us out here. Yep. There's a health pack. That would have gone <laughs> oh, Sixty seconds remaining. <laughs> 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 
Alright, so... Yeah, let's just keep going here. Not too good as me. Oh, in the open, right, um, not really respecting cover real, real well here, and no. also in the last fight as well, right, we've, we've talked about this before, so... I'm where do I, on. where would you cover here in this situation? Uh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Just, you know, cover from high ground, cover from over here, if they, mm -hmm. you know, what we could do is we could charge up a crouch, and we, you know, we talked about, um, anti-dive in this, in this way, right, where, you know, dive... Mm -hmm gets on top of you, you jump out of the way. Well, we can do this exact same concept with a brawl, right? If they, for example, like you could be, say, for example, like if, if we're right here, well, what's going to happen if they drop on top of me? Well, if they drop on top of you and you have a jump available, well, then, whoop, well, now we're up here. Right. Um, so that's just an option that we have. But here we, we, we're on, directly on point, right? And then that means that Ash has perfect line of sight to just go pew pew and kill us. Um, and then, therefore, because we're only open, we die, right? For, first... Mm -hmm. Um, positioning there's just a big thing to and then that that means both fights we've died first right that that, that was our impact on on losing the fight was dying so we want to look to cut out our deaths right and make sure we're staying alive mm -hmm. longer because us dying first in these fights is is our big impact on losing them on my way. true or potentially losing them even if we even if we yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> no it, it resonates cuz mm. yeah it, every time i die the team goes down yep mhm mm almost walked directly into that <laughs> <laughs> all right um now uh, yeah, in I this see. situation did reinhardt did he, like so first off i don't like I, I don't like that he's that far forwards but um right in any case here we're we're out we're kind of out in the open. I think that we're trying to catch up to the Reinhardt, though. I think that you might would still probably find more value out of just like unless unless he's expressing like in voice chat that he's trying to push past choke. I would imagine that he's probably not gonna push past choke, um, like unless he's saying that I'm gonna push past choke. So you might just find more value out of sitting back and point maybe on the high ground here, right where we can just be here and you know be have that good angle or we can mm -hmm. shoot him from the high ground right rather than you know if we're like here and he's far away this might be a little bit more difficult of an angle but this might give us better angle M means that we wouldn't be out in the open here and then also when bob comes in we actually back up this way right uh -huh. but that's backing up into their whole team right so you just want to be very very right. careful of that and here, you know, just uh, us being over here, just like, for, like, just let's say we just kept walking and we got around this corner. Well, now this is much better positioning because we're putting ourselves right. out of line side of everyone. And it's also probably highly unlikely that Bob even latches on to us when we have our entire team here. And if he does, then all you have to do is, you know, and then we have this corner right here we can take. But mm -hmm. here we just, we walk backwards into the enemy team, which potentially kills us. No, we're good. Mm -hmm. um, but, no, uh, I'd say that's decent, but... Yeah, not, mm -hmm. not, not the most terrible, or old, I said, no more. Mm -hmm. um, three seconds left, so yep, good good visor, or not visor, visor, window, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Words all over the place. Mm -hmm. Alright, so yep, position, so quick strengths and weaknesses of what mm -hmm. we're looking at at the moment. Alright, um... Old wise, I think I've seen one question mark because I, we've all these rounds have yeah. been so fast. <laughs> oh no no no! I saw your Valk as well. All right, I saw your Valk mm -hmm. and I saw this. Um, honestly, ults have been looking pretty solid. Not too much mm -hmm. to comment on them. Um, the timing of them were pretty decent. Not too much that we did wrong with them. So those were looking kind of like a lower low priority to work on. Um, now moving on from there, mechanics. We hit shots fine. Really, the big thing is just overhealing, right? Uh, in in our mechanics category, is the only thing really there. So mechanics would maybe go to like a medium category to work on, just because overhealing is a pretty decently big thing, especially when it's cons we've seen that it's been so consistent throughout all of your games. Mm -hmm. Um, then moving on from there, you have positioning. Positioning has seemed like one of the bigger things that we've been struggling with. So mm -hmm. that is going to be something that we need to work on in this game. Um, that would probably go to like a medium high for now. Um, okay. Then, yeah, then the, the, the three 
big and then awareness same thing and then probably say that ability usage is probably so his ability usage is probably going to go in the, at a medium priority, right? And then the awareness is probably going to be medium high because the awareness fed into a ton, like it fed into, first off, just, you know, mistakes flat up, um, just flat up awareness, awareness mm -hmm. mistakes. It's fed into deaths. It's also fed into overhealing as well as messing up our lamps, right? So awareness is actually looking like one of the bigger ones. So positioning and yeah. awareness being the biggest, um, then overhealing and ability usage being second and then finally the last one just being our uh ult usage mm -hmm. all right so i on it honestly the um mechanics probably would just be at the moment just be categorized as i would just get rid of the mechanics category and just say it's uh overhealing okay in one piece. I don't mind an easy ride. You all look like you needed some healing. Okay, unnecessary shift usage. Now what happens to Zarya here? So Zarya is lagging behind us. Yeah, okay, so Zarya's lagging behind. He, he <laughs> Kali walks uh, not with our team at the moment, and then he just gets shredded. So um, honestly, not a ton we could have done there. Um, cause, I mean, because he, he just died and like he got discorded and then probably got like tapped by the McCree and Zenyatta. So he died in like half a second there. So even paying attention, Lamp probably wouldn't have saved them, which is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But that that's unfortunate because it sets us at a disadvantage, which is like you know the same thing that we did the first fight where we were lag lagging behind our team, and you just see how that can really snowball when people aren't walking out on walking out on time. Yeah. Um. Here. here. Yeah. So here it looks like we just get a headshot from McCree, who's uh sitting main. Uh, um. So really, here just probably backing up a little bit faster or right? just being mm -hmm. we kind of you see how we we kind of walk forwards here or right, so we back up we, we're the we're the furthest back on our team we actually back up first out of like everybody here yeah look how far back we are but we actually walk forwards to get back to our reinhardt and then that results in us dying so imagine if we were just sitting here where and right. remember, we talked about uh, we talked about uh, positioning before with Anna and Baptiste and what, whatever those characters, right? Where mm -hmm. um, you're trying to when when you're just healing, you're putting the enemy team out of your line of sight so, and just putting the, your team in your line of sight, right? So like right here for trying to heal without dying, we can just do this, and now we could see Reinhardt just fine while also being on, out of line of sight of everybody else, right? So this is just the positioning we want to have rather than being on the open. We should just come from backing up faster and not being out in the open. Which is like mm -hmm. kind of more positioning stuff, right? Yeah, that was some pretty good shift usage. Make sure we're rotating like in the middle yeah. of our tanks, that way we're not getting lagging behind slightly and Very then getting lucky. shot at. Okay, um, same thing as last time, if we're just healing and we're not shooting, make sure that we're putting enemy team at our line of sight, and on top of that, make sure we're just using cover, because here, we're, even if we're on the inside, we're not using cover, so let's say, for example, mm -hmm. um, you know, Reinhardt's drop shields and Zenyatta, right, so Zenyatta can see us from McCree, right, McCree can see us, let's say one of them starts shooting at us, well, um, where are we going to run, are we going to go run right side, well, it's going to take us a second or two, right, we're going to run left side, well, it's going to take a second or two, right, so just positioning, further left further right right off the bat probably further left would be the, the best option here and so that they can't see us while also putting everyone out of a line of sight so from here we can we have the option so if we can heal reinhardt up and anybody on our team up and then if we decide okay everyone's full hp i'm gonna shoot right then we can just peek and shoot right half a second but we don't want to be out in the open here when yeah. it's unnecessary that's a big this is a big one that's sinking in for me as i'm watching mm. this yeah Immediately has to be dealt with. All right. Um. Let's let's see what happens with Zarya here. So Zarya, we look away for like one second. We, we're back. Zarya's critical. 
and it just oof. so maybe like just reaction time is about like a half second but again mm-hmm. people are blowing up real fast man um yeah that po- it possibly could be something to be aware of the other thing is just e- even this is a situation where I probably say danger level comes in before like a uh, even above health bar of just mm-hmm. if we rewatch this real quick right and we look at the situation we look to the side Reinhardt backs up so right now we're looking at the situation and we're like uh, this might not even be something that I picked up, uh, at least now that I'm I haven't played support in a really long time. Maybe in my heyday when I played support a, a lot, but um, this would be something that we just want to be aware of: is paying attention to danger level, right? Because we've discussed in the right. past that being in danger is not the same as being low health. Right now, Zarya is not low health, but she is very much in danger, right? He has one, two, three, four, wow, five, right. like and a half things looking at her. She's out in the open. Does she have bubble? Uh, seven. No, she does not have personal bubble for six seconds. So Kali Walker probably should be here. But um, and then also right. on top of that, like Reinhardt doesn't have, isn't shielding them, right? So mm. in this situation, even if Zarya is full HP here, she is in danger, right? Which is so that means right. that th- we can assume that she's going to be taking a whole lot of damage in a second, which we'll we're going to see. Yes, she is. And boom, she's dead. Um, so that's a situation where we just need to identify the danger level of the person, not necessarily the health bar, right? That's that's why why like it is very important to pay attention to health bars, and that's gonna be that's gonna help you with your ability usage. We also have to pay attention to how in danger is somebody, and that's gonna come from uh, do they have tank like how, do they have tanking, right? Do they have a shield? Do they have bubble? Do how many people are looking at them? Are they being a uh, are is the enemy team like using abilities on them? Are they using ultimates on them? Right? If they're, you know, somebody could be full HP and have shield up and have bubble, but being in a grab dragon and be in danger, right? It's just right. there's there's a lot of different variables that go into it, and we just want to be paying attention. That way, we're not letting Zarya die when maybe if we had been paying attention, we could have possibly done it. Though I would say that that's a very advanced, difficult thing to do, and. I'm not blaming you for like for not mm-hmm. picking that up, but it is still a thing to you know e- yeah. be looking at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, it good. felt dangerous. <laughs> yep, good. Good ult here, right? Good timing with it. It's still an even fight, so it's definitely winnable. But oh, we're out in the open, and we almost died. <laughs> yeah. All right, we also started shooting through this quite a bit when we did have a bunch of people who were critical, right? So we plop mm-hmm. our ult down, right? We, we, we look at this. Oh, sorry, he's about to die, right? We plop our ult down. Um, good timing of it, but then we see we have one critical, two critical, three critical, right? So one, two, three critical, and then we are shooting, right? We go we go heal, and then we're... Or at least we were, we're shooting when Reaper is critical, at the very least. We, we started shooting when people, like, were... We're at least low here, right? So yeah. shoot, shoot, Reaper's critical, Lucy's critical, shoot, shoot. We also didn't have any ammo, right? So that means that maybe reload habits. I don't know. Like, if mm-hmm. we probably we have probably had a lull in time before this, mm-hmm. which would mean that now we're out of ammo when we have three people critical, which would mean that we, if we had reloaded, then now we actually have ammo to work with, and then Reinhardt doesn't die. Okay, I guess he didn't have shield. Yeah, we just healed uh, nothing yeah. for, for two shots. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah. honestly, you know, some, some deaths you can do stuff about. That one, maybe not so much. Full charge Zarya rushing it down. Um, maybe the only thing would just have been, like, if Reinhardt was still alive, then he wouldn't, like, then she wouldn't have been able to run at you. So, um, mm-hmm. just keeping Reinhardt alive there maybe wins that. Yeah. I, oh. I think I'm on autopilot, like, as if I see a window, shoot through it, but I sh- should have prioritized healing yep. and let the team work with the window. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, lagging behind their team, All right? Yeah. That's going to get us killed one of these days, right? especially Thank when people... Mm-hmm. Especially when people like at higher ranks start to capitalize on that a little bit better, right? They because these are the type of mistake. That's the type of mistake that honestly isn't going to be too obvious now. Though um, you rank up a couple hundred SR or you start playing in higher level scrim games or whatever, you're gonna notice they're gonna be punished for it much more often. So it's you know it's better to get you get out of that 
um, you know, early than than getting out of it later. Though I would say it's still uh, out of all the things we've talked about, it's a lower priority. Like I'd definitely improve on you know positioning, awareness, and overhealing before I focus on making sure you're sticking with your team. Though it is still something to pay attention to and keep I in mind it. that it is a mistake. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't yeah. know who that lamp's for. What, that, what was that for? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, so yeah, just putting more effort and attention and care into our lamps because that one didn't really seem to be for anything in particular. Could that be a fat finger? I don't know. Oh, what that I mean, that, that's possible. I mean, we also again we kind of <laughs> no, look at we kind of look at the ground when we're doing it again. So I don't know because I can't blame it on that. All yeah. Right. <laughs> That was a good molten core. They almost got us. Um, in this situation, honestly, probably not necessary that you need to drop from high ground. We have mm. like so we we've we've talked about um making sure you're sticking with your team, right? Like keeping mm -hmm. a close positioning, but sometimes that can be trumped by just a good high ground positioning because even like from high ground, um we we get a lot of other benefits to kind of counteract some of the negatives like the we've talked about the negative as being like it takes longer to heal it's a like it, it's going to take longer for you them to get lamp um and that can be within range of your shift but from here now we have a ton more survivability especially when your team's like running on the point where like you know if we let's say we like we're right and we listen to the positioning that like we previously talked about like where we're, we're supposed to be sticking with our team well we're sticking with our team well now this is a real real bad position for us to be in right um not right. really the best so instead like it's again it's going to be situational where like sometimes you're going to stick with the team but sometimes you might want to take a high ground when it's an option so in this situation we can just sit up here and pelt them for free from the high like from high ground here um right. be, up, be up here to heal zarya or, or McCree or whoever we need to, we can throw in a lamp and have good angles to land lamp and, and healing from, while also not putting ourselves in a very dangerous situation. We can also, we have a ton of visibility to shoot or heal anybody from here. So there's a lot of good positives that come from this positioning that um, probably would be the, the biggest thing is the fact that if we drop now, we're just very far on the open. And then now this positioning means that we're stuck on the ground in Tor Ultimate, right? And then that means that we get very, very low to, close to dying there. All right, and then because we messed up Immortality, then Reinhardt didn't have it to stay alive. All right, um, okay, maybe tracking there. Need, needed a little bit of work on the yeah. Baptiste there. All right, just making sure we're, we're trying to hit more than just one shot on these guys. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Not my time. Sixty seconds remaining. Fully healed. And so we're coming up on another ult. Oh. Whoa. Yep. Done. <laughs> Where was he? Died very fast there. So let's rewatch that a little bit. So this time we're sticking in the middle of our team. Um, it looks like we have a McCree, Reinhardt. So here, if we know where they're all at, it might be a good idea to just like approach from like this direction, right? This way while we're walking forwards. Like if you look at this angle, right? Look how much damage is coming that's coming through this tight little corridor right here. This is a choke point right. and they're funneling six people's worth of damage through this, right? So what we can do mm -hmm. to avoid all that damage is just like position right here and while we're running in, it takes like half a second to do that, right? It's just the difference between that and this. Right, mm -hmm. exact, basically exactly where your McCree's, McCree's at right now. You can approach the same way your team does, except for now we've put everybody besides Reinhardt out of our line of sight, and what's Reinhardt going to do to you? So mm -hmm. in this situation, we blow up because of our poor positioning, which wasn't immediately apparent <laughs> until we, um, until a second later, but there we just got fire striked and then blown up because Reinhardt dropped the shield, so better positioning keeps us alive there. So positioning, 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 right? Keeping good cover usage. Right, not not just not and remembering right. Sometimes like this can get lost on some people. Like when I emphasize like, I guess like the the first step to to using 
cover is standing next to it, but there's also the second step of actually standing behind the cover, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, the good positioning. Like I, I've, I always say, right? My, my, my kind of my phrase that I say to people is, "Good positioning is the usage of cover. Bad positioning is the absence of cover." But usage of cover does not just entail standing right here. It entails standing right here when you're being shot at. So mm-hmm. if you see damage is coming in, it cover usage means that you're standing behind cover, not just standing next to cover. I love that. That's, yeah, that's a big one. All right. Probably use shift here. Probably use shift here. All right. A little bit delayed with that. Um, lamp, probably not necessary in that situation. I think the only person who's really low is just us. And then that would have just been counteracted if we had just used shift, right? Or requesting nice healing use. or whatever, right? So shift is a much, like, or sorry, your your, your ultimate, whatever. Uh, whatever it's called, your lamp, right? Is a much, much bigger and important cooldown than your shift is. So you'd much, like, if you're low HP, you're going to want to use your shift much more than your ultimate. <laughs> Okay. Coming in here, using our ult slightly late into the fight. Probably just want to come in and like use it immediately as soon as we get it. So I guess actually we're 99. My bad. I didn't. I didn't realize we're still 99. So we actually do place it pretty much instantly. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me all get shattered. All right, there we missed a bunch of our, our shift or our right clicks. Mm. I think I think we're we're worried about a McCree on our left there. So let's see, McCree is on our left. We do some shots, spam shots with that onto nothing. All right, we it looks like maybe we're panicking here in the la- in the last yeah, little bit. Yeah, um, I was like, yeah, I couldn't tell if things were hitting or why they weren't, and I was trying to not poke or peek out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, um. Probably some better positioning than that would be to just charge up a ship, jump up the high ground. Right, right now, from here, we put McCree at our line of sight while also getting much better angles over the whole point. So, again, high ground positioning, very easy to attain with your just charging up a shift. And then this means mm-hmm. that we can actually reach their tanks a little bit easier. All right, and then that potentially keeps them alive. And then, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, we have, you know, like eight more minutes here for the. You know, going over stuff. Do you have another mm-hmm. uh, replay you'd like to go over? Mm-hmm. No, no. I think we can try. To, we can wrap it up. All right. So yeah, yeah. Then you know, moving on to the wrap up part. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're gonna for the main points. We're gonna condense it a little bit. Just like I'm, I'm gonna eliminate some of the categories. Right? I usually go through the five, but I think I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, ults were looking really solid, and I didn't. I don't think like for any of them, I really had anything to comment on. So. Mm-hmm. We're just going to eliminate that category completely, right? No um, same thing with uh, mechanics. We're just going to get rid of the mechanics category, and we're replacing that with um, just overhealing because mm-hmm. there was, like, one time where we missed some shots with our left click, and then I guess maybe the other thing would just be, like, you know, sometimes we just spam left click as well, but I, I that's, like, kind of, like, the same thing as overhealing. It's, like, kind of just – I don't I, – that's that, that one's not as common, but I would say that's – uh, I don't even know if I have a term for that, <laughs> but you know, just you know, spam damage when it's not necessary, right? When you're not really doing anything in, t- in particular, right? So, but that still kind of, kind of falls in the same category of overhealing. So that that was the big one there, um, and also like you know, I I just want you really focus in on the on the right things that you want to look to work on, right? So mm-hmm. now let's get let's get into everything else. All right, um, ability usage. Make sure we're really really concentrating and putting effort into our into our uh, whatever lamps, right? Trying, trying to struggle with the words there. Um, make sure we're putting a lot of effort into our lamps. The big thing is paying attention particularly to two things. Health bars and danger level of people, right? Of when is this lamp needed? There was a lot of times where we would just throw lamp way, way too early. That was almost actually most of our mistakes with lamp was just because we would throw lamp too early. So don't have a trigger finger with it um, and just mm-hmm. throw it before it's necessary, right? Um, so just make sure we're paying attention to health bars and when people are low HP, that might be when we need to use it. When somebody's in danger, that might be when we need to use it, right? When they have five people looking at them, when they don't have abilities, when they don't have shield, when they're out in the open, right? That they might be more in danger than if they were just low behind a corner, right? And they're definitely more in danger than if they 
don't need it at all, right? Make sure we're using our shift so that we're not using to need use it for ourselves, right? Or other people around us. Shift usage though wasn't too terrible at all. It's just you know a couple times where we just want to make make sure we're using a l little bit better. Um, moving on to awareness. Um, awareness honestly was one of the biggest. I'm not even sure which one to put a higher awareness or positioning. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna do awareness just because it feeds into so many other things. Um, like uh, I, honestly, positioning I think just my, is very very close for the top here. But awareness fed into your overhealing, and I fed into your lamp usage. But the big thing with our, our awareness is pay attention to health bars, right? When yeah. what is the health of my team is going to lead to a bunch of benefits, right? What is the health of myself? What is the health of um the people of the enemy team, right? Paying attention to the people around us. Make sure paying attention to the danger level of people, right? And we're assessing that and paying attention to where's my team, where's the enemy team, so we can not get caught out in rotations and we can put people out of line of sight. And this can allow us to have better positioning when we're paying attention to our surroundings, right? Because then we can make better decisions accordingly, right? Um, pay attention, you know, uh, is that it? I don't think we have to worry about ultimates. We didn't talk about, you know, paying attention to your surroundings. The big thing is just, you know, is health bars, enemy team, my team, right? Those are really the main things. Mm -hmm. Pay attention, like your your ability, your ability usage better, right? Pay attention to your um, how we're overhealing, right? And then that's gonna mm -hmm. all lead to just a, a bunch of benefits, right? If we're just paying attention to our environment, right? Then moving on from there, finally positioning being the last one, right? So with our positioning, make sure we're not on the open, right? Just that was something that happened quite a bit, right? And then that yeah. led to a bunch of deaths and a bunch of times where we were required to um, use immortality or we need to use shift unnecessarily or we just, you know, could have potentially died. So make sure we're not on the open, but we're using cover. Um, and we're not just putting ourselves near cover, but when, when we know that we're going to take damage, we're actively putting ourselves around the cover, right? So good positioning is the usage of cover, right? Not good positioning is the standing next to cover, right? Though that is still, right. that's, that's good positioning, but it's not using the good positioning, right? Right. Um, now... On, uh, on from that, right, when we're when we're just flat up healing people, make sure, you know, we're putting enemies out of our line of sight, right, or if we're, like, you know, doing an approach, and, like, anytime we don't, we're, like, the only time we actually need to see the enemy team is if we're peeking them to know what's happening around us, or if we're getting damage in, right, but any other time, we just put them out of our line of sight so we can just, where we can heal, and we can, um, without putting us in their line of sight, right? take high grounds whenever they're an option, we can very easily just shift up to them, right, it's very, very fast, it takes you, like, what i don't even know how long it takes to charge up like a second and a half right to, to, yeah. to charge up a shift right mm -hmm. very very fast you get really good angles survivability and visibility right from the high grounds ton of tons of ben benefits that sometimes outweigh the the negatives of being too far away from somebody you just want to make sure that the high grounds not too too far away right if the high grounds like all the way over here right well, now that's a little bit different maybe not want to be all the way over there but um if right. high, especially if the high grounds close enough to them then this is going to be much better than being on a low ground in a bad position especially if they're out in the open on point right um on from there make sure what was some other things uh make sure we're rotating with our team and we're not lagging too far mm -hmm. behind them right? and we're walking out of spawn on time right and we're not lagging out because we saw what happened when Kali Kali Wog lagged behind her team to start off. He got mm -hmm. instantly shredded, and that potentially is what happens to us. All right, mm -hmm. um, and then that is pretty much it. So main points: number one, awareness. Right, that's gonna lead. That leads into um, just flat out awareness is, is the problem, right? And then also that you're you having better awareness is gonna lead into better ability usage as well as better. Um, knowing when to not overheal right or no, not mm -hmm. overhealing in general right and then secondly will come positioning which that led mainly into deaths which you know when you're dying of course you can't do much and you're putting your team at a big disadvantage so um positioning would have allowed us to be more effective while also dying less and then on from there probably would say that number three is going to come in at our uh, ability usage specifically lamp usage so um Honestly, like if we're if we're trying to like really narrow it down here to like give you some specific things to work on and try to focus on, I'm, I'm rather than um, calling it ability usage, I'll just honestly narrow that down to you just call it lamp usage, right? Um, okay. How you can use your lamp. Then number four is going to be your overhealing, and then then that is it. Um, yeah. 
that those are the the main ones, right? Some of the some of the two bigger categories, right? like you know the only, the reason why they're the bigger categories is because I can still call it positioning and have enough content to fill the positioning, yeah. right? Whereas if we're talking about you know I can't I can't even have give you a mechanics category because there's not enough to talk about in the, that category, right. right? So you know that's one of the reasons why you can see it's still something to work on, right? Um, yeah. So keep keep working on it, right? Really really focus on it while you're playing and practicing. Um, and yep, do you have any final questions before we wrap it up then? No, I think this is this is good. This kind of um, kind of focused or pointed things that you're telling me right now, which is the I'm seeing how awareness it's such a broad term, but if I can just work on how it affects my positioning and ability usage, specifically the lamp usage, that's very much something mm-hmm. I can work yep. on this it's, week. It's a very, sure. very broad term, but remember, like this mm. one of the, one of the first things I, uh, or I mean, I very much hope that without throughout one of our sessions so far, I've said this, yeah. but I'll reiterate, right? Um, when we're trying to focus on the things we're, we're working on, we're not trying to do everything all at once, or even sometimes True. even one category can be too much. Ex- even if, especially if it's like the main category and it has the most stuff in it. Like if we're talking about awareness, mm-hmm. there's a ton of stuff that goes into that, right? So you mm-hmm. know, if we're if we're trying to focus on our awareness with our overhealing and our awareness with our lamp usage and our awareness with not dying and our awareness with you know paying attention to people around us and health parts, right? Then that becomes overwhelming, right? So instead, right, right. we focus on you know. If we're not even trying to go over, like, usually, like, one category is fine, but if the one category is too massive, then focus mm-hmm. on, like, you know, one to, one to three smaller things within that category. So maybe okay. to, to start off, you can just focus on um, paying attention to health bars more, right? Mm-hmm. And then that will feed into some other things, right? Like, that, mm-hmm. just that one thing feeds into two different other categories. Not just, you know, healing better, but then also not overhealing and mm-hmm. also using lamp better right when we're paying the shelf bar so that might be maybe like a good one to start on is just number one just focusing on our paying attention to health bars right and then yeah. you, you can move on from there you can maybe if you feel like you're um you you want to add something else in you can maybe add in another thing or like two or three right in total but try not to get too overwhelming with it right try to keep it simple so you can really focus in on that one thing and then um that way hopefully next time we can come back and awareness won't be the number one thing you know now it still might be just because it sometimes it doesn't take one week to, to get over this stuff it might take you know yeah. two or three weeks but um at the same time it'd be fantastic if you came back in a week and oh, we were completely done with awareness and then now we can move on to some different things more advanced things right. um, you know the higher sr you're going the the more punishment you're going to be getting on these different yeah. topics so you know you're going to have completely different mistakes from you know now to when you're a masters player because now mm-hmm. masters players are punishing you for different things and now they're more aware for me to pick up on them uh, as well as also for you to me to visually show you right because true honestly even even for me you know picking up on them it's sometimes like if, if you're not being punished for your mistakes I don't, I don't even notice that the mistakes are there just because they're not apparent right um yeah so yep yeah no, this other is questions? super help no this is super helpful because i keep getting punished and i really i'm wanting to know what i'm getting punished for so this is all this is very very helpful all honest. right Thank so, you so much. No 